Welcome. You're watching Fairfield Public Television. Welcome, Bob Tree. Well, thank you. It's good to be here again. Yes. So that means it's that time of year again, which is the Fairfield Concert Association's annual membership drive. That's right. This is our for our 58th season. 58 long years, uh, wonderful years in our community. And you've been involved in quite a few of those. Yes, since around, I think, 1960 or 61. And uh, ever since, and of course I did serve a hitch back uh, a number of years ago as president of the association. And I've been publicity chairman now for 25, 30 years, something like that. That's a lot. Uh, there are many members, uh, board members. It's a large board. Yes, we normally have 23 members. And I think we're uh, right up to that uh, number right now. And who is the current president? Current president is Jane Rowe. Jane Rowe. And has been, I think, for now four or five years. And uh, Once they get you, they get you. They get you, yo. <laughs> I think it took me 15 years to get out of the job. Oh, and I think... <laughs> One of your original members passed away fairly recently. That was Dorothy Lowell. She was the last of our original board members, one of the founding members of the association. And she was about, I think, 95 and, and remained remarkably active right up. Uh, she, was, uh, she was still planning on calling people at the time that she died. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, well, she hadn't been able to get to board meetings in the last couple of years. Uh, she was able occasionally to get to a concert, but she continued to be very interested in what was going on and what we were doing. This is a dedicated group of uh, community members that forms the Fairfield Concert Association, and you can tell by all their giving over the many, many years and what they give to the community. Um, the concert season, it's a membership drive. Right, and it is a subscription series. And that is that there are no single uh, memberships or admissions sold at the door. Uh, <coughs> because we don't have a long list of guarantors who will pick up the deficit at the end of the season. We really have to have a good idea of what our budget is going to be uh, before we start into the season. And uh, you can really only do that if you have a subscription series, that you have the people have joined and have paid uh, for their membership. I remember so well, uh, quite a few years ago now, but we had a blizzard the night of a pianist being here. And I think there were 25 of us in the high school auditorium that evening, oh. and she played a wonderful program, just as though it was a packed house. But uh, you can imagine what it would have been like because she had to be paid. Right. And she was there, ready to go on at the appointed time, and uh, it would have been a pretty thin take at the box office that night. <laughs> yes. So what you take in during your membership drive is what you take then and you can spend for the concerts that you arrange for the following year. That is that correct. Season. And uh, we virtually all of the money that we take in through the sale of memberships goes for the artists. Now, of course, there are some expenses that uh, are involved in putting on a concert. For example, I mentioned the pianist. If we have to use the piano, uh, it must be tuned. And uh, sometimes we even have to rent a particular piano, which of course is an additional uh, cost. It can be upwards of four or five hundred dollars to rent a piano. And um, then of course uh, there is the, the cost of renting the auditorium. Now we, uh, we have to pay every time we have a concert at the high school auditorium mm -hmm. or we use the middle school uh, auditorium, uh, we have to pay uh, for that. And occasion you've used a church. And occasionally we use a church. So uh, there are incidental costs and of course there are some costs attendant to the membership drive uh, such as printing of posters, we do some advertising in the local newspapers and on the radio to 
uh, make people aware that mm -hmm. uh, we are having a membership drive, but we have no paid employees. We do not rent any office space. Uh, secretary membership chairman, for example, simply donates space in her home for the, the files and all of that. So uh, we, and none of our board members uh, receive any remuneration from the organization. So it is a case of putting uh, virtually all of the uh, membership uh, funds to the artist's budget. Right and we have it. this year, I think maybe uh, our audience would be interested in knowing, uh, that we have an artist's budget this year of $15,000. Now does the budget run so you know what you have that you raised last year that you're doing this year? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. that's the way okay. it's really based on it. And it gives us a good idea of what we can, right. what we can do. But it's been very interesting. I have gone back and looked at what artists cost us uh, back uh, 50 uh, years or so ago. And here we would have somebody of considerable prominence in that era, mm -hmm. and their fee might be $250. And now? Now uh, it will be $2,500 and more. Right. Um, we don't see many artists available that we wish to bring to our audience. We don't see many available uh, for much under $2,000. And how many concerts a year do you have? We have uh, been doing now for the last few years, we have been doing consistently five concerts. And sometimes if we find something as we're going along in the year, that we can bring in at a low cost, but we think our audience would enjoy, we have sometimes done a sixth uh, concert. What we've done there, uh, just uh, examples, we have on occasion uh, had a, uh, a local student who is a member of a college choir. Okay. Such choirs like very much to go to hometowns. Right. And because it always assures an audience and so forth, and the kids like it. And so on a couple of occasions recently, in recent years, that we've actually done a little fundraising among some of our members and board members and so forth to raise the additional money uh, to bring a choir mm -hmm. from XYZ College into uh, our program. And these, of course, these choirs, they are not professional singers, they are not being paid, and yet it costs anywhere from two to three thousand dollars to bring a college choir to your stage, to our high school auditorium. I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's, that's still, even for that, that's a lot. That is a lot of money. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Another really nice thing about this is you have the, the five concerts, but you also have reciprocity. Yes, we do, and we have had reciprocity for many years uh, with Ottumwa, uh, with Washington, and uh, with Keokuk. So that means that if you are a member of the Concert Association here, then you can attend concerts in th those communities mm -hmm. If you miss the one here, you can go there and catch it. Or if you really liked it, you can go again. That is, uh, and that's what people do, assuming, of course, uh, that uh, perhaps uh, our, uh, our violinist is also playing in Washington, for example. Uh, and sometimes that is the case. And uh, people do uh, do that when they, there's an opportunity to hear them again, if they've really enjoyed them, to go over to another community and hear it again. And all they do is present uh, their Fairfield membership card and they are admitted uh, free of charge. The other thing that it does is that it expands our concerts from a series of five uh, to, um, well, Ottumwa usually has three. Washington ordinarily has four, sometimes five. And the Keokuk uh, generally has four uh, concerts. So Fairfield has the most. We usually have the most. That's really good. And we're, and we're very happy with that. And we have really gone from 
uh, when we used to do three concerts and then we moved up to four and then in recent years uh, to five. Now part of that is because uh, our membership has been loyal. They have continued to purchase their memberships. We have also developed an endowment program uh, which has uh, now up to, uh, I think it's awfully close to $100,000 in endowment. The interest of which, from which, we use for an extra concert. And that's where really the fifth concert is coming okay. from, is from the endowment fund. And that's a very important part of the uh, uh, organization nowadays, is to develop an endowment fund to do this because things do cost so much and so all during the year you can give memorials and special gifts and honorariums. Um, well exactly we certainly encourage and we receive uh, quite a few memorials uh, for people uh, who have been interested in the association and have died. Uh, people uh, often will send us uh, the memorial check mm -hmm. rather than sending it somewhere else. And uh, we we're very grateful to receive that. And, uh, and as you say, others who are interested in it sometimes leave a bequest mm -hmm. uh, to the association. And um, so that the endowment fund has become uh, really very important. And indeed, as I have been somewhat familiar with some of the other towns with associations, I would say that those who have developed an endowment fund or a, a, uh, d some sort of an extra drive mm -hmm. uh, to build up a fund are in the best shape. Some of those who have depended entirely on membership uh, have found themselves having real difficulties staying viable. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and partly of that is because, of course, the cost uh, of the artist has gone up. Right. And, uh, and when you figure, well, we all know what it costs to drive a car today. Well, I think we sort of know because the gas price keeps going up. Yes, <laughs> and up. yes. Uh, these people have to pay their expenses. They have road expenses of travel. Uh, the motel doesn't um, charge them $5 a night any longer as it did 50, 60 years yes, ago. Yes, definitely. And... Um, so it's, uh, it's one of those things that it's part of the times. Yes, and it's, it's so nice that the Concert Association brings these groups, these very uh, talented groups, to our community, and we don't have to go out. I mean, people like to go to Hancher and do other things, but it's nice to have them in our community to have people see them that maybe don't have the chance to go um, to other places. Right. This is very true because there are people who uh, either can't afford it or have health problems and whatnot. They can't go great distance but can come here. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we've, uh, community, some of our service organizations have been generous in giving student memberships to the schools. And some of our teachers and administrators uh, have been very generous with their time in that they will kind of chaperone the youngsters mm -hmm. that uh, particularly like third, fourth graders, they love to come to these things. And so oftentimes one of the teachers, well you drop your a boy or girl off at the high school and I will be sitting there with them. And the artists love it when they come out and they see a row or two uh, of children down in front of them. Yes. And they think that is great no. and they will play oftentimes a bit to the uh, to the kids. Yes, they're so full of life. And I didn't know about this program until a, a year or so ago that you can uh, do the, the memberships and donate them. And I think that's what I did last year with one of mine is donated mm -hmm. it um, for someone in the schools to use it. So you're not only supporting the concert association, but you're also planting the seed with some young person that has a real musical interest yep. to develop. And it's kind of interesting to talk with some of our 
younger members who are parents now and have children and so forth in the school system. And how they say, well, we weren't very interested in it when we were in high school. Mm -hmm. But we've kind of come back to it. And that too, seems to be the experience of others working in this area. That uh, the third, fourth, fifth graders, they thoroughly enjoy it. And they like to come. But when they get on into uh, late middle school, high school, their interests change, their activities are, they've got a lot of different activities, and so they kind of get away from it. Mm -hmm. But as they get older, they married, family, uh, they begin to, well, that was fun, I enjoyed that, let's, and they come, let's back. come back to it. Mm -hmm. And what's also really nice about the Fairfruit Concert Association is the variety that you yep. always have. Um, sometimes you have dance, you have instrumental, uh, vocalist, such a variety. Well, and I've been interested in the years that I've been with it, uh, how much broader our program is now than it used to be. That uh, our definition of, of, of good music uh, has broadened. It no longer is it just opera and oratorio mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. We have some of that occasionally, uh, but um, yeah, we've also come to recognize that there is a lot to be said for good folk music and, uh, and a variety of dance and that sort of thing. So that, yes, the program is much broader, appeals to a wider taste. And I think in the course of just looking over next year's uh, series, there is something here that everyone uh, is going to enjoy, will be interested in. And in the process of attending various programs, they may find that, well, something that they weren't terribly interested in proves to be very good. They enjoyed that. Yes. And so uh, it, it's a bit like, well, tr eat it, you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And really, right. It, is, it is true. So that, uh, this coming up concert association season has a little bit for everyone's taste. Right. Um, the membership drive, which is very important, that supports uh, the concerts for next year is April 17th through the 28th. And where, how do they buy memberships? All right. They can buy a membership from any one of the board members. And most of the board members do recruit some workers to also sell uh, memberships. Uh, also, uh, at the um, uh, Somebody Cares, there on the east side of the square, uh, they can, during their regular business hours, they are selling memberships. And, um, and the memberships, the adults are, I don't have my glasses, is that $35? <laughs> $35 for adults, and students are $20. And we are very uh, generous, I think, on our definition of student. And our definition of a student is one that's essentially from kindergarten and if they're still in college, full-time college student, they can uh, come on a student membership. And of course, grade school and high school, mm -hmm. those are all $20 memberships. And then there is the family membership, which is $70. And uh, that includes parents, and as many children as they have in the family. So all of this is a real bargain. I, I, I read somewhere when you broke it down, the five concerts, say for an adult, $5 a piece? Uh, it's actually, it'd be $7, $7 now. $7 mm -hmm. a piece. Yeah. So yeah, that's what a bargain. Well, it really is, because you mentioned Hancher Auditorium a little bit ago, and uh, it is nothing to buy uh, a ticket to one of their programs, which are all very good programs, but it's nothing to spend 35 to 40 or $45, or even as much as 60 $65 right. for one ticket. Right, and you're getting the whole season or a whole family mm -hmm. membership for this. Uh, so it really, it really, I think, is, is a bargain.
Definitely. And when you think of not only are you getting our five programs, but you're getting the programs from three other communities as well, uh, it really uh, breaks it down to, uh, you can't go to a movie for what it, <laughs> uh, right. what and you're, you're really getting, 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 and you're getting live entertainment. So Another thing I might add, Susan, that I think is important to note is that how many of our artists that appear on our stage have are graduates of the leading music schools in the country or of Europe. I've been impressed in recent years with how many Juilliard mm -hmm. graduates uh, come across to our stage, and that's probably the premier uh, music school in the country, although perhaps somebody from Indiana music school uh, mm -hmm. would differ. <laughs> but uh, uh, un and understandably so, but Indiana uh, mu University Music School, Eastman, uh, Cleveland Institute, um, Curtis, you know, these are the, the top drawer and a great many of our artists uh, are from those schools. And I know we've talked before um, about sometimes you're able to catch these young, talented people before they go on to get famous. Yes. I think a case in point that many of our uh, viewers will remember the Ahn sisters. Uh, three girls from Korea, Juilliard graduates, string ensemble, and uh, we had them before Hancher had them. But they went on from here, two years later they were at Hancher. So you better catch them here. <laughs> and yeah, we do have people that uh, will go on and uh, we are fortunate that we've had them when we could afford them mm -hmm. because in two years or so, uh, they're not going to be in our, in our range. Mm -hmm. They will be in the larger venues, the more expensive ones. And, uh, and, and another thing that's awful good is that when you have them, when they're recent graduates, there is a very, there's a freshness about their work and their enthusiasm and all that uh, is catching. Yeah. And uh, while they may not have quite the polish of a more seasoned performer, they have that freshness, uh, mm -hmm. viewpoint and outlook that's really very enjoyable. Yes. So let's take a look at the season for coming up. All right, we are going to lead off with the Cadence, this uh, a cappella vocal group. And um, they're from uh, Canada, they're from Toronto. And we have had very good success in recent years. Uh, we've had the Blenders, we've had Tonic, tonic Solfa. Uh, both groups have gone on to much uh, bigger things than uh, locally. And this group has been a very great success in Canada and in the United States. And I think we're very fortunate uh, to have them. They are a lively group. Uh, they, uh, they not only sing well, but they like to do a little clowning around as well. So I, I think our audience is going to be in for a, a lot of fun, as well as hearing uh, exceptionally good a cappella singing. Sounds like one you're not going to want to miss. No, I think we'll really look forward to that one. Then our second one is Montana Skies here. This is, this is something a little different than we have had. Um, as you can see in the picture, uh, she is the cellist and uh, he is the guitarist. That's Jennifer Adams and on the cello and uh, Jonathan Adams as the guitarist. And what they have succeeded in doing is blending two very different string instruments together. You get the sonorous sounds of the cello with the uh, rapid fire of the guitar. And uh, they play a quite a varied program from a classical, really classical, serious classical, uh, to uh, local uh, modern pop, uh, music that, uh, and again, they, they bring that and they use their name from 
the Montana skies, the openness, the big sky country. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a fun, a fun evening. Yes. And, and they look as though they were enjoying it themselves. And next we have... Now, next we have is uh, Donna Wissinger, uh, who is a superb, some call it flautist, some say flutist. I'll leave you to decide which it is. <laughs> but she plays a flute like nobody else. And as I recall it, now maybe things have changed, but as I recall it, at one time we had so many uh, students at the high school who played the flute that uh, Ron Prill was the uh, director then, that he had to divide them into two groups. And group A would play the first half of a concert, and group B would play the other half of the concert, because he couldn't get them all on the stage uh, at oh, the same time wow. and have room for the rest of the band. Uh, so I think we have a lot of people in town that know something about the flute and enjoy the flute music. And uh, of course she has a piano accompaniment and she is a classical musician, classically trained. But again, she, like so many of them, she is broad in what she will do. And so her program is going to have she calls it American Tapestry, is the title of her program. And it's largely American uh, composers. Copeland, Samuel Barber, um, I think Gershwin, I think there's some Gershwin in there. Uh, in other words, it's a, it's a wide-ranging program. And she, she's very much in demand as a clinician at uh, music uh, camps and Oh, you know, we have band day, and the musicians show up here at Fairfield or mm -hmm. go over to a tumble or whatever. And she uh, works with them, and she loves to communicate with her audience. So I think you'll find that what she will do is talk quite a bit about what she is doing and about her instrument. And I think most of our audience enjoys it, and more and more our artists are doing this sort of thing of talking about their instrument. I remember when we had that uh, a German uh, quartet of cellos here uh, oh, three, four years ago now, and I think all of us were astonished when one of them said that his cello, now the group is from Germany, that his cello uh, was from Chicago. Hmm. Yeah, those are little things. <laughs> little, that, little tidbits that, that sort of... They're fun to hear. And also, you know, I was going to say, Fairfield has such a strong band um, and vocal in our school system. Right. And I think that's due to Jim Edgeton and the wonderful um, teachers. But also the, Fair, the uh, Fairfield Concert Association probably keeps an awareness and the quality of uh, concerts that are in our community and the kids can hear and they grow up hearing and it all adds up to uh, a benefit yeah. for everybody. I think it does and I, I would also like to put in a little plug for our Southeast uh, Iowa Symphony that they have a very good youth program in which they go to various right. schools. We've had them here at the Fairfield High School just a few years ago and uh, you know, when these organizations, like the Concert Association, the Symphony, the schools, uh, when we can all work together and cooperate and support one another, it's better for all. And we all enjoy it more because we... Definitely. We have a background for it. And it shows up in the talent of our young people um, mm -hmm. that go on and, and with our schools. So... We're all winning. <laughs> yeah, I think now, it's a win-win. Which one are we doing? Uh, this one, Proteus 7, okay. is our fourth uh, concert series, a fourth program on our series. And this is a most unusual group in that it is a, a chamber ensemble, uh, but it has two trumpets and two trombones, uh, some reeds, and percussion. In other words, it's a different combination of instruments from uh, what you normally expect. You talk about a piano uh, chamber uh, or a 
violin chamber group. But this is more brass and reeds, and they bring a, a real a different artistry to their music. It's a classical group, uh, but again, far ranging, and their uh, musicianship is superb. So I think anybody that uh, likes chamber music, loves the brasses, uh, is going to have a wonderful time with this group. I certainly uh, recommend them. And, and then the fifth. The year we come to a fellow I think is great. Uh, I have a couple of his tapes, and I had the good fortune, as I hope maybe others did here a few years ago, to hear him over at Mount Pleasant. This is Bill Schustick, a troubadour uh, in the truest sense of the word. This is what he specializes, is telling stories in music, in singing. And he has one of the richest baritone voices you ever want to hear. It's just gorgeous to listen to him sing, it's beautiful to listen to him talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a tremendous personality. He <clears throat> they used to talk about the late Bing Crosby as being able to sell a song. Bill is one of those who can sell a song that uh, and he has a wide range of, uh, uh, of repertoire. Now this one, his program, he's calling it uh, Across the Wide Missouri. And uh, he is going to be uh, emphasizing songs that have to deal with uh, the Shenandoah, the Missouri itself, uh, other rivers, western lore. Some of the things he's going to sing were songs that the men of the Corps of Discovery of Lewis and Clark uh, liked to sing around the campfire uh, of a night when they were fighting off the mosquitoes. <laughs> and uh, also uh, he's going to bring uh, in some songs that apparently were favorites of Abraham Lincoln's. Boy, those songs you were talking about bring back memories. I don't know if it's the same now. And in grade schools, but I remember Mrs. Landrum and, and singing so many of those, and I have really good memories of that. Uh, so this will be really good for uh, young people, I would think. I would think so. I think they will enjoy him, and he, <coughs> he loves to play to the young people. And uh, what he often does when he comes into a community uh, is uh, to go around and look at the houses and uh, talk to people, get a feel of the town before he ever gets on the stage. And so it's personalized I to Fairfield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. So I wouldn't be surprised, but if he gets in and has enough time, I don't know how, what his schedule, travel schedule will be like, but if he has enough time to come in and look at some of our houses out on uh, East Burlington and mm -hmm. South uh, Main Street and so forth, uh, and look at the square. Uh, I think uh, he will have comments. A bit of a history make. lesson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So once again, we are talking Bob Tree um, with the Fairfield Concert Association and their 2006-07 concert series. It's their season membership season, which is April 17th through the 28th. It's a time of year to join and support. Uh, so that their concerts for next year can be selected. The prices are bargains, adults 35, students 20, and family for 70. And you can give these memberships to the schools um, or as a gift for someone. Uh, you can purchase them from any member or at Somebody Cares. And there's reciprocity with Ottumwa and Washington, Washington and Keokuk. And Keokuk. So it's a real bargain and a wonderful um, organization in our community that I think we all need to support. Thank you. So uh, is there anything we've left out? No, I think we have uh, we've covered the waterfront quite well. Okay. And I just hope that uh, a great many people will uh, stop board members uh, or um, uh, pick up the phone numbers from our posters and we have tents uh, on tables at restaurants like McDonald's and Burger King and so forth. 
uh, pick up a phone number, give them a call, stop in at Somebody Cares and uh, during their regular business hours and uh, buy a membership. It's a good bargain, you can't beat it and uh, it'll be a great year the next year if we can have that auditorium well filled. Yes, yeah, so please join the Fairfield Concert Association in their 58th year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too.